All right. Well, welcome to the Stagecoach podcast. Um, we're visiting today with Jim Burnett, who writes under the name of Casey Nash. Uh, his Jubal Stone series has been a huge hit for our listeners. They just love his books. And we're really excited to talk with uh, Casey Nash today. So Casey, hi. <laughs> hey, Ginger, how are you? Good, good. I'm so happy to have you here. Well, thanks for having me. I'm excited about this. Great, great. Well, we want to hear all about uh, you and all about your characters of uh, Jubal Stone. And uh, so first of all, tell us, like, when did you begin your career as a writer? Well, I started writing uh, for Christian magazines probably 20 years ago, some leadership articles, that kind of thing. But uh, somewhere around 2014, I had this crazy idea of writing a novel. And I, um, I got about 85% finished before I even told my wife, who's my soulmate, that I was writing the novel. And she was surprised. And, you know, I was a little bit afraid of, I thought maybe this is the dumbest thing I've ever done in my life. And she read uh, the book that I wrote and she cried and she had constructive criticism and she really encouraged me to move forward with it. And so uh, 2014 was my first novel and it was the uh, Caller Spring series. And I think there was six books in that. Um, and so 2014 is when it all started. And uh, then um, several characters later uh, at Jubal Stone now, and uh, those have really uh, done well, and I've enjoyed writing them also. Mm -hmm. And uh, so do you write full time? Tell, tell me a little bit about your transition from writing as a hobby to writing as a profession, and what does that look like for you? How much time do you spend every day or... Yeah, well, um, you know, my writing now, I would say, is kind of an obsession for me. It's sort of like an outlet that I just kind of have to write or I maybe will explode. I don't know. But um, yeah, it, I started, I think, the last couple of years, I would kind of maybe push it into the professional mode of uh, I get up around 5, 5.30, and it's odd. I'm usually at uh, a Waffle House for about two and a half to three hours every morning writing. And um, so throughout the day, I'm thinking, and uh, but my main time to write is early in the morning. I write at night as well. Uh, I have a, another job. My full-time job, I guess, would be as a pastor or minister. And it's kind of interesting how those two dovetail and give me lots of fodder for writing uh, because, you know, you're books are all about people and I'm around a lot of people, a lot of different people, a lot of interesting people. So I never lack uh, for uh, something to write about. Yeah, I'm sure that they just mesh together well. And, and that's one reason why people love your books so well, because they are, um, well, there's a lot of uh, Western action in them, but they're they're nice, you know, clean books. They're good for right. family. Um, right. Thank you. And that that definitely is important to me uh, to write books that really families can read. And I've had a lot of input from readers to say, you know, I, I, we we've read this together as a family, and that that uh, is encouraging to me. And um, something I'll never have to be ashamed of or think, oh, I wish I wouldn't have put that in there and that kind of thing. So, <laughs> Well, so uh, um, tell me a little bit about, uh, you know, how did you come up with the whole Jubal Stone character, first of all, uh, because we, we just love him. And, um, and, and tell me a little bit about the research that goes behind your coming up with a character like that. Right. Well, um, you know, it's, it's just, I think I'm in that thinking mode all the time. And I can't really tell you exactly where Jubal Stone came from, just in my imagination. But, um, you know, just in, in life and doing life and living, you, you have ideas. And I try to write some of those down. And so 
the Jubal Stone series was birthed kind of like the other things I've written. It just sort of came to my mind and, and I'm always kind of playing out scenarios, the next adventure for Jubal Stone. And so we're, I think, uh, 33 books into that, which kind of blows me away that uh, there's that many books and I appreciate so much readers wanting to read those. But, um, you know, Jubal's just always getting himself in a lot of trouble as a marshal in the, the Old West, and there's uh, plenty for him to do and, um, you know, connecting him with other characters. I've done some co-writes where we've mingled him with some other well-known characters. Uh, right now, I'm writing with Paul Thompson and his Shorty Thompson series, uh, so it's 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 really been an interesting adventure, the Jubal Stone deal. And uh, again, just constantly thinking of, of ideas and stories for him to be involved in. Mm -hmm. And uh, coming up with research, uh, you know, what would you recommend, you know, for somebody who maybe wants to think about writing a Western, um, you know, what kind of research can they do other than reading a lot of Westerns, of course? Right. Well, you know, and I, I would say the genre is important if they're writing contemporary Westerns is one thing. Of course, mine are all the old West. And so getting very familiar with those times and the uh, customs of the people and, you know, a, a, watching a lot of, of uh, TV programs, Bonanza, Gunsmoke, all those just kind of feed that um, Lonesome Dove, all those, you know, the John Wayne movies. Um, and so you draw from a lot of that stuff, you know, just little ideas here and there. Um, for So research is just being familiar with the times and trying to line that up because the readers are very smart. They're savvy. You know, they, if they're Western buffs, uh, they know when a word doesn't fit or they know when, Hey, that wasn't even around then. And you're mentioning that, you know, and so you try to be authentic to the times, to the people of that day. And uh, it's, it's humorous. My dad, he was, uh, he was a storyteller and uh, he would tell a lot of stories, but he also used a lot of the phrases of the old days and I didn't ever understand them until probably the last few years when I would look up some of the slang western slang and, and I'm like that's where that comes from and so I would put it in a book and you know when I, I hear a twist or a phrase um, I try to put it in a book you know because it's fresh uh, so that's where a lot of my research came from plus I travel a good bit and I go out West, I've always loved the West, but back in 2014, when I wrote that first novel, the setting of it was Horse Creek, Wyoming. And I was out there working with some church planters one summer, and I was driving from Cheyenne to Casper, and I kept seeing a, a sign that said Horse Creek. And I'm like, I've got to go out there. That's where my book, that's the setting of it. So I just took the exit and drove out there about 25 minutes later. Um, there was hardly any houses. I was getting a little bit uh, nervous because just little civilization out that way. But I came to um, Horse Creek proper and it was sort of anticlimactic because it was a mail drop and a firehouse. And I'm like, wow, you know. But then about a half a mile from there was a ranch house and I stopped and I spoke to the foreman there. He uh, told me who owned the ranch and the guy was not there, but I left a book. And, um, and the owner of the ranch read the book. He called me and told me how much it meant to him. He said, I'm sorry, you, I, I missed you when you come back out this way. I wanna show you my beautiful ranch. Well, I've been staying with him for the last seven years. Mm -hmm. uh, at his ranch, which is uh, 70,000 acres, which is amazing. It's like Yellowstone. And he has been so gracious to allow me to come and just hang out. And so I get a lot of my writing ideas from being on that ranch. I, I ride with his Wranglers. I grew up riding horses. We work cattle there in the mountains and uh, it is just pristine landscape and the cattle and all the 
wildlife. And um, my wife and I were there last summer and we saw a, a lot of elk. We saw some wild horses. Um, and so that's where I get a lot of writing ideas when I travel. And I would, I would say to anybody considering writing is that, you know, you need stimuli. You've, you've got to be stimulated. And so traveling for me has, has, has been a big part of that. Yeah. Yeah. And oh, what a great environment to be in. Wyoming is just so Ooh, beautiful. Yeah. yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. I could see how that would really uh, come through in your writing. There's, yeah. Yeah. It's a great environment. And, and how about you? Do you live on a ranch? And what is your, uh, your lifestyle? Like yeah, we, we have, uh, I guess what I'd call a small farm. It's about 30 acres, um, certainly not comparable to the ranches out West, but it keeps me busy. I have horses and goats and, uh, and, and I've, I grew up around horses and I've, I've trained them and worked with colts and all that kind of stuff. So it's sort of in my blood. Um, and so, yeah, even where I live and what I do from day to day just feeds into my writing. Uh, I love to just, kind of, you know, get close to my horse and, 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 and just kind of write, think of ideas and kind of look at their mannerisms. And, and, and it's ironic, uh, even with my goats, uh, I have about, about five goats and they had some little ones. And um, one of my last Jubal Stones was the wild goats of Eagle Pass. Well, that, they inspired that book. And so nothing is wasted. It's just, you know, right out there in front of you. And so I see that and it just kind of bakes in my mind. And um, I think about it a while and then I just start kind of, I just take off on it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, you said that the, the Jubal Stone series is about 33 books. And then you have the Horse Creek series. And um, how many books have you, have you published? I think it's a little over 50 now. Uh, my daughter jumped on Amazon not too long ago and she said, dad, you have like 50 books on Amazon. I'm like, really? <laughs> because the Jubal Stones, they've, they have, you know, cr have cranked those out pretty quick. And so I've really not kept up with them number wise, but yeah, I have the, the Miracle at College Spring. That was my first series. And then I have a um, Jedediah Justice series. And I think we just uh, did some short stories on that, a reprint. And uh, I love that character as well, Jedediah Justice, and then started on the Jubal Stone. And so that's three main series. And I've also written some short stories as well. Okay. Yeah. Well, you're de definitely a natural born storyteller. And uh it sounds like your father was as well. So you probably inherited that. So um, how do you develop your writing? Do you start from a, an idea, from a plot line, uh, yeah. a title? You know, what, what do you do? Right. So for me, uh, and I'm probably kind of sat down with this, but it works for me. But an idea is where I start. And, I, you know, I can hear a phrase or, or something and I'm like, the wheels start turning and immediately, and I start kind of uh, stringing some thoughts together on it. And then if I feel like there's a story there, uh, I begin to write it and immediately I give it a title. Mm -hmm. uh, sort of like, I kind of know where it will end, but I don't know what's gonna happen in the beginning until the end. So I, I know other writers, they, they write, maybe half the book or more before they'll give it a title. For me, it's always, I've started with the title. And, and so it's kind of, it's kind of weird maybe, uh, but that's, <laughs> that's kind of how I do it. <laughs> well, it certainly works. And I, you know, we're glad that that does work for you. Um, what's the best advice you would give a new, a new author, somebody who maybe loves Westerns and wants to think about, you know, becoming an author, what advice yeah. would you give them? Well, I think first of all, the, the courage to start writing. And I like what Louis L'Amour says, you know, if you want to be a good writer, you write and you write and you write. And that is true. You know, I, I look at um, 
some of my first writings and they're a little bit painful uh, to look at because kind of amateur. My first book, which was Miracle at College Spring Ranch, it, it has a very powerful message. And I've gotten so many over the years, people have called and said, you know, this book saved my marriage, you know, or, or, or God did this through it. And, and I'm so humbled by that, but also know that book, that was the first one I wrote. And, and I want to actually rewrite that one and add and, and, and um, develop it a little bit more. But for me, it's, um, I, I, I think it's true. It's, it, it's writing as a discipline. It's not a spur of the moment. Uh, for me, like I said, it's, it's every day getting up early and, um, and getting on it, you know, and making a, being very intentional about saying, this is not a hobby, it's a profession, because for me, it's been a, a, a good revenue stream. And I've come to count on that. And like every writer, you want to reach more readers, you want to sell more books, so my commitment is try to put the best product out there as I can. And to do that, it takes time. There's really no shortcuts. And so it is, uh, for me, I, I write all of my books from a laptop. And it's weird because I have little niches. I go, like I mentioned, Waffle House. Um, and I don't own any stock in that. So, you know, I'm not promoting them. But um, that's one of the places in some of the coffee houses shops you know I'll, I'll go and stay two or three hours sometimes there um and and so it's funny for me you'd think and maybe for some writers they said well i've got to get alone you know where there's nothing around me for me it's just the opposite is you know if somebody walks to the door and maybe they're limping or they've got some unique hair i'm like i jot that down like it may be in that story in a few minutes you know and, and so I'm kind of stimulated by people around me. Now, I'm not, that's not always the atmosphere I write in. I, I do just write by myself uh, uh, a number of times as well. So just changing up the atmosphere in your environment, I think stimulates you even more, you know. Mm -hmm. And what's next for you? What's, what's, uh, what's the next story we can look forward to? Well, um, I'm currently writing a co-write with Paul Thompson, and um, it will be uh, finished pretty soon. Also writing uh, another Jubal Stone, um, and as well as I, I have a, I think I failed to mention the, the Eutychus Bly series. That's really gone well, too, and um, he's a Kansas range detective, and, and actually Jubal Stone trained him but he was a farmer that, you know, uh, was a victim of land grabbers and, you know, they took his farm and killed his baby brother and all that. And he was just a pacifist for years until he just woke up one day and said, I've had enough. And the governor of Kansas asked him to be a range detective and had Jubal Stone train him as a lawman. So I'm writing another one. Uh, I think this will be the the eighth one in that series or maybe nine I can't remember but so continuing to work on the Jubal Stones continuing to work on the Eutychus Bly and kind of peppered with some co-writes in between oh great yeah great. yeah and uh so you're published through Dusty Saddle Publishing correct and um you know, we can find your books on Kindle. Uh, they're available as Kindle books, paperbacks, and now also on our podcast. And yes, we, yes. Yeah, we actually have a, a new uh, Jubal Stone story coming out uh, today. It'll be ready, it'll be uploaded today. It's the Wagon Wheel Justice book. So we're really yeah. looking forward to that. Good. And, good. Uh, the, the comments have just been wonderful. You know, people love your stories. They're always asking for the next one. And so uh, we've really enjoyed having you on our podcast and now being able to meet you in person. And, uh, well, it's been my privilege. And I'm, I, I've, I'll say this from my heart. I'm humbled by people wanting to read something I write. I've not gotten over that. I hope I never do. But um you know, I appreciate the reader so much. And I'm also excited about the, um, the audio 
presentation of the Jubal Stone books. I know there's one on your podcast, I think, a uh, free download or one on stagecoach deal, I think. Um, and I think people have enjoyed that. And there will be other Jubal Stones that will be audio version that will be offered, I think, as, you know, as pay. So looking forward to that uh, also as well. Mm-hmm. Right. We'll be able to find you on audio books and uh, right. on the podcast. And uh, yeah, that's a, a, a great idea to maybe have a, a download that, that somebody could, you know, continue on with the. Yeah. Story. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and I would tell say me, also, you... I'm sorry. go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh. oh, do you have a Facebook page also? I do have a Facebook page and it's, um, it's Jim Burnett, but there's a Casey Nash page. So yeah, they can find me on Facebook face, um, on, under Casey Nash. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll get that link from you and then I'll, I'll put it below in the comments so that uh, people can connect with you that way as well. Yeah, that'd be great. And you know, one thing ginger people ask about the Jubal Stones, and again, there's, I think 33 or um, 34th will be coming out soon, but um you know, they said, which one should I start with first? And I, I would say the first two books, uh, mainly the first book gives you the backstory of Jubal Stone, you know, when he was a kid and what happened to his family. And it kind of helps put the pieces together and, and how and why he became a lawman. And so I would say read book one and maybe even book two. And then after that, they're sort of standalones because he's going in all directions. So you can just pick up, but I would suggest and encourage uh, book one, definitely. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah. Uh, and the rest of your series is all available on at uh, Amazon. So, right. so right. yeah, they can exactly. just uh, get hooked on it and read yeah. it all. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, we want some Jubal Stone junkies, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think so well it's been such a pleasure to uh talk with you today i i really appreciate you coming on the podcast and giving us a little bit of background about you and you know it, it it's really nice when you can put an author's face and story behind right. what you're reading or listening right. to. Well, thank you for having me. It's been my privilege and uh, I've, I've enjoyed it. Great. Well, thank you very much. And we will hear much more from you. Okay. Thank you, Ginger. All right. Thank you. Thank you.